welcome to our uh, Tech Talks at Rocket. Um, Rocket is an uh, Rocket Reloaded is an Interreg 5A project, which focuses on Dutch-German cross-border cooperation. And uh, why do we do these webinars now? We want to introduce you to the innovations emerging in Rocket Reloaded's projects and the experts behind them. Um, Rock, um, today, um, our guest um, is um, are the um, innovators behind um, e Nanoprint Pro. But first of all, I would like to hand over the screen to Alex van Geltrop. He's um, the um, project manager from the lead partner. And um, yes, the stage is yours, Alex. Yes, thank you, Hendrik. And I also sent you a, a different slide. Yeah, thank you. So welcome, everyone. Um, my name is Alex Vergelop, and I work at the Regional Development Agency for the Eastern Netherlands, Oostenel. And as Hendrik mentioned, I'm the project manager for Rocket Reloaded. Um, and just as a bit more background information, uh, Rocket Reloaded, or Rocket, is a cascade funding project, uh, which means that we've been able to finance a number of innovation projects within the framework. Uh, it's financed in general by the Dutch-German Interreg program, and its main goal is to stimulate developments for innovative products or services that are made possible by advancements in key enabling technologies. And importantly, to stimulate Dutch-German collaboration between organizations. So in general, Rocket is coordinated by four core partners. On the German side, that's the nano micro Bergstoffe photonica cluster, of Northern Hemisphere and MWP, of which Hendrik is a member, and the uh, Transfer Agentur Fachhochschule Münster. And on the Dutch side, those are HITECHNL and OSTNL. And we also collaborate with our associated partners, Innospelli, Novity, and the Development Agency of Brabant. And together with that club, we've been able to stimulate and partly finance uh, six innovation projects. And those projects are in front of you on the screen. And today we are, we are here for the eNanoprint Pro project or the EMP platform. And Marcel de Grote and his colleagues will be elaborating on that later on. Um, but the eNanoprint Pro program was originally a feasibility study within an earlier program and has now developed into a full, mature, more comprehensive innovation project in the past two or three years. So we're looking forward to see what they've been able to accomplish during the time frame. Um, perhaps interesting for some of you next week. There will be another webinar on another project, on a skinball project, which focuses on the development of a hand scanner for improved early detection of skin cancer through our RF technology. Um, so for those of you who are interested, on the same day, the same time frame, next week, uh, that webinar will be held. Um, and two other projects have already been finished and presented their results earlier on, the AutoMass 3D and the Sensitive Program, and those Webinars can be rewatched on our website, rocketdesinnovations.eu. Um, I have one other issue that I would like to address. We, the, the core partners, developed the framework of Rocket in order to create an instrument that could stimulate certain innovative ideas. Uh, but we were only to able to do that successfully because of our connections with innovative companies and their inputs, uh, roadmaps, challenges, etc., to to help us build that framework. But in return, a lot of those companies were able to participate within the projects because the frameworks were already tailored logically to their needs, challenges, roadmap, etc. So in general, the invitation that I would like to extend to everybody listening is that if you're part of an organization that has ambitious, innovative goals for the coming years, feel free to reach out to, to either me or one of our colleagues in this webinar. Uh, and we can get acquainted, discuss ideas, and see if we can support each other on the short or middle term and see what is possible, uh, just like we did with the six projects in front of you. Um, this is from my side. Uh, I hope that you have an informative, uh, useful, and enjoyable webinar and um, that you enjoy the day. So, Marcel, Arjan, uh, Hendrik, um, feel free to take over. Yeah. So, thank you very much, um, Alex. And now, Artyan, um, if you would like to share your screen, um, you can start your presentation. All right. Let me share our screen here. Just a moment, please. It's a... I think that should work now. Perfect. 
Okay. Oh, the screen is yours. Thanks. Thanks for the introduction. Well, excellent. Um, welcome at this um, uh, tech talk um, by uh, the micro and uh, let's say having the opportunity to uh, chair this, uh, this project. My name is uh, Marcel Groten, and next to me is uh, Arjan Hoeven, who has uh, contributed uh, as a partner into the project. Um, we, are, we are extremely grateful for, let's say, setting up the structure of uh, Rocket and uh, the uh, interregional uh, collaboration, and especially by support by uh, Alex and Henrik in uh, setting up this kind of uh, projects. And as Alex already indicated, this program and this project the development project was a continuation of the feasibility uh, study we did um, in, before this uh, project. And actually the feasibility was initiated by discovering the um, electrospinning uh, technology as being one of those emerging technologies that could be applicable for microelectronics uh, um, applications. And uh, this triggered the feasibility study. And after the feasibility study with some, some let's say, uh, literature and also some uh, benchmarking and doing some laboratory experiments, we, um, we, we created this project, project together with our partners in, in Germany, uh, Microtech and Cotema, for uh, developing uh, the next step uh, from, let's say, feasibility into functional modules and into a prototyping uh, activity. And this is what we're going to just uh, present in this uh, presentation. Maybe can you give the next uh, slide? Uh, so as, as I told before, so the German partners Microtech and Cotema contributed into, into this consortium together with uh, uh, tech to biz which is in fact is uh, our John's activity, and also a tech V, which is a system designer specialist within our network in the high-tech um, uh, Brainport region in Eindhoven. And uh, then being supported by Alex and Orson Alp and, uh, and others uh, giving really tailwind in financing this, uh, this innovative activity. Um, here you can see, let's say, the consortium as such. So we had the honor to, to lead the program. Um, the um, Microtech typically is a specialized company in Duisburg uh, on uh, 3D structures and manufacturing of microsystems. Cotema uh, is this um, innovative uh, company on roll to roll industrialized equipment and having an R&D center in Dormagen. And tech to biz which is Ajan, in fact, is specialized in international project management and also has a lot of experience in market uh, analysis and development in display and semiconductor. And as uh, last but not least, uh, tech V, which is actually a specialist uh, on arm length from the micro, uh, responsible for design and engineering uh, of systems and uh, printer systems. So with this, with this consortium, we addressed um, the, uh, the project and the program. And um, so continuing, I can, I can tell you a little bit about e-nano printing, why we were embarking upon this technology, uh, what we needed to do to create a, you know, a solution for that, uh, what we have learned and what results were yielded from the project up till now, and obviously, we can close with uh, the perspective and next steps for future uh, developments. Now, the Inana printing project and the feasibility study actually was about um, embarking upon electro spinning uh, and electro spinning creating uh, a nano fibers or nano wires and. Um, as I learned in 2016 on a conference, uh, the uh, nano fibers, the nano, uh, nano um, wires as being generated by electrospinning technology was already studied in research for about, uh, about a decade. Um, and um, I learned about this technology uh, only recently, let's say converting nanoprinting for, for all applications rather than research. So, 
It could be used for, for batteries or in photovoltaic applications. There is a room for, let's say, nanofibers also in display and in microfluidics. So in general, also for electronics and semicon, nanofibers obviously are uh, you know, of, of importance. And last but not least, even in, in biochips, uh, I've seen a um, presentation and you can see the, uh, the image for that, that even nanofibers, which are useful for being scaffolds in cell structures, also could be used for interconnection with our nerve systems. And in future could, could then be a connection for bioelectronics uh, stimulation. Now, the nano uh, fibers could yield and could be a, a structural components for filters or membranes in these applications. And also could be applicable for touch screens, microphones, or even microelectric mechanical systems uh, for that. Now, we, within this uh, study and within this development, we uh, particularly focused on uh, the red sections, as you might, might uh, conclude, on touch screens and micro pumps. And these were, let's say, the application areas where our German partners in the consortium have a special interest. And if I look into the touch screens uh, uh, capability, then transparent conductor film is of uh, paramount importance into this, let's say, high volume uh, industry. Creating uh, transparent conductive films in the incumbent technology currently is indium tin oxide, as you can see in the middle. Um, and the industry is looking for replacement of ITO as indium is a scarce and, and rather expensive material. And so if there would be an opportunity to replace that with metal mesh, uh, it really would, uh, let's say, enhance the performance of transparent conductive film and it would lower the cost. So there is a, a large driver for finding uh, alternative technologies for ITO replacement. And metal mesh would be, let's say, the application to go for. And nanoprinting could be one of those additive technologies to create metal mesh. So here we go. These are the um, applications we are, are trying to follow through. And next slide, please. Um, oh, this is what I just, uh, let's say, tried to explain. Uh, there's a large potential on uh, uh, transparent conductor film, the replacements of ITO, and uh, creating a large area capability also, let's say, from a performance point of view. Next slide will also indicate the, the second key application, which is, in fact, the microphone for biological and uh, inside medical uh, body implementation. So Microtech already had developed a prototype for a microfluidic pump based on this, uh, let's say, wireless um, uh, structure, as you can see on the, on the picture. And the ambition would be to create a very small pump, a very, a very small pump uh, that could be feasible if we would be able to print microstructures or nanostructures, even submicron structures uh yielding a, a pump functionality so this is the, the second key application the project was focusing on now the electro spinning technology actually uh, is also called uh, electro hydrodynamic printing and the electro hydrodynamic printing in fact is uh, uh, is a near field electro spinning. So regular electro, electro spinning technology, which already exists for more, about 100 years, was used for, let's say, creating fibers and typically having a distance from the needle tip to the substrate of about 300 millimeters. And uh, if you spin on 300 millimeters distance at high voltage, let's say 30 kilovolts, you get a randomized uh, fabric. Uh, but if you bring the needle tip close to the substrate, like one millimeter, and reduce the voltage to, let's say, one to two kilovolts, you, you are able to, to pull a uh, fiber from the uh, so-called Taylor coil from the needle tip onto the, to the grounded collector. Now, this uh, 
voltage then only works if the polymer solution uh, is um, um, not conductor. So it should be able to have a, a ability to to repulse electrostatically, and by doing so, you know, elongation of the fiber. So this is the way the fiber is being pulled from the needle bed uh, onto the grounded collector. And then uh, several parameters are influencing this technology or this, this phenomena, like the viscosity of the polymer solution, like the height, like the uh, electric field strength, but also the, the speed uh, difference between, let's say, the substrate and the needle tip. So the higher the speed, for instance, you know, it pulls and elongates the, the polymer jet from the needle to the substrate. And by doing so, you have this direct right patterning capability of near field electrospinning. And this is what we call uh, electrohydrodynamic printing. Okay. Now, to be able to um, follow through on this process, you need a printer. And uh, within the project scope, so the first step actually was to design and create a dedicated print head and drive electronics to be able to do the electrodynamic printing. Um, so what we did within this project was design and engineer uh, the print head with the, um, the specific uh, features, needles, uh, and what have you to create this jet and, um, and put that into an existing uh, laboratory setup for a printer, a Pixel LP50. Uh, set up what we could demonstrate at least uh, the first uh, process results. This is what we did for creating uh, the pump uh, prototypes. And next to that, we also integrated within the project on a uh, roll to roll environment at Cotema in Dormagen the integration of the printhead module and the system electronics into a industrial art, um, research roll to roll. Um, uh, test environment. Now, here you can see what we developed uh, through the course of the project. So we created a first prototype module of the uh, print head. At the left, you can see the, the, the framework and the body uh, holding two syringes uh, with driver and motors and, and electronics. And you can see the red cable, which actually is applying the high voltage to the needle and being insulated from the frame. Um, now, this high voltage is being applied by the driver electronics, as you can see on the second picture. And in red, you can see that the high voltage drivers with the microcontrollers and the electronic interface uh, for, for driving the motors and uh, doing the yeah, human interface uh, with the with the printer, and on the right you can see, let's say, live the nozzle being operational with the print jet. And the nozzle is actually, in this case, we implemented a double needle system, so we can print a coaxial uh, fluid. Where in future we can implement, for instance, silver ink or silver nanoparticle inks in the core and then apply a polymer shield um, uh, on top of that to create the uh, elongation and, and repulsion on the, on the jet uh, fiber. Next sheet, please. Here you can see what we, what we then did. And uh, by doing so, having a setup or a prototype for a printer creating conductive wires. Now, for creating conductive wires in your application, you can follow several strategies. Well, one of those strategies is to print uh, edge resist or at least a polymer on top of a, um, a metallized substrate, uh, substrate and then use the, the, the uh, printed um, fibers as a mask for creating and then etching away the metal, metallic film um, you know, removing and stripping the uh, polymer layers and you got your metallic uh, nanowires or your metal mesh. So this would be one way of doing that. And another way of doing that would be to, and this is why we got the coaxial wires or needle, to create a coaxial uh, stream or jet where the silver nanoparticles would be 
uh, internal into a shielded uh, polymer. Now it's obvious that uh, driving a silver ink or silver nanoparticles would immediately shortcut the high voltage uh, from the needle to the substrate. So the, 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 the sheet uh, polymer should then uh, protect this um, electrostatic field. Uh, other uh, application could be to uh, go for conductive polymers like PDOT, PSS, or even using a solution where we could have a precursor and uh, having a post process by treatments and creating the metal mass uh, later on the, on the substrate. So these process uh, variations are typically to be examined and to be explored uh, by the uh, by the uh, EMP printer. And during the course of the project, so after actually establishing this uh, prototypes, we did some experiments. And here you can see some, some results, some nice results with the PoE uh, on copper substrates. And we could demonstrate functionality of the tool, uh, having line width of 20 micron in this respect, uh, with spacing of 100 micron. Uh, and controlled on PET also the line width. And we did actually a parameter study like a DOE on, on the several parameters which are influencing the uh, diameter uh, dimensions, uh, like flow rate, as you see in the top uh, screen, and also the electric field strength, and uh, finding optimal parameter sets for the uh, printing process. Uh, we also did some initial tests with uh, conductive wires, so with the coaxial uh, spinning, but we only are at the start of doing, uh, let's say, this exercise uh, as uh, the search for uh, applicable silver nanoparticle inks is still ongoing. For uh, the industrial application, as we're indicating, for transparent conductive film creating metal mesh, we did the experiments with the uh, Kotema's uh, smart coater and implemented our um, prototypes for the printer, the, the needle and the driver system on top of and integrated into the coater. And then studied, let's say, functionality uh, and uh, uh, understood about the parameter and space to be explored. And here you can see, um, you know, applying this uh, printer hat on top of a, a slide or a transfer slide, we could create the first, let's say, zigzag patterns on a web. And, you know, giving the first feasibility on um, creating nanofibers on roll to roll applications. For the micropump fabrication, we first started to uh, uh, print by inkjet printing the uh, corresponding lines to see if we could just you know, minut miniaturize the, the pump. Um, and uh, we still need to explore the uh, electrohydrodynamic printing and feasibility. Now to, uh, to also explore the uh, miniaturized functionality of the pump. Uh, Microtech also did the experiments with uh, PVD and etching, so lithographic uh, uh, processes to understand the characteristics of a micro pump uh, by doing this, uh, let's say, fine feature structures uh, in this respect. So that's what we uh, ended up with so far within the project. And um, this brought us to, let's say, the results of the uh, and learnings of the projects where the e-printer prototype has been uh, successfully made and was functional. So we demonstrated uh, stability in uh, driving uh, the near field electro spinning process, so the electrohydrodynamic process. We were able to create the samples and, and do a, a process study. Um, you can see uh, in the picture right, we also were able to demonstrate uh, not only, let's say, 12 micro, uh, micrometer uh, feature sizes, but also we were able to make submicron wires uh, demonstrated, as you can see on this picture. 
We did the trials uh, with the integration of the printer modules in the smart filter of Cotema and showed that uh, the system is functional and we will be able to move into next steps for uh, industrial applications. For the, for the microfluidic pumps, uh, we created, uh, together with Microtech, a batch of pumps to be characterized and fabri fabricated. And these are still uh, under test and learn about next steps, which we need to do to develop the pump into, into the next uh, revision of innovation. And it's clear that the project was a really uh, support and, and, and boosted the cross-border cooperation, strengthened our, uh, let's say, network uh, and brought together our uh, gate insights or our, our mutual uh, perspectives in market and in technical capabilities. So, I already concluded on that. Um, the e-printer now has the maturity that we would be able to also uh, perform uh, studies on materials or even uh, making this uh, print hat and electronics available for research labs or environments. So within the course of this year, we are uh, working on making a series of about five of those uh, hats. Um, which then could be incorporated into motion platforms or in printers uh, like the LP50 and uh, making that available for, for industries or for research institutes to do their own uh, material research. Um, the application of this printing technology, near field printing or H uh, electron hydrodynamic technology is clear uh, possible within world to world application as we demonstrated and as stated before, we have a clear view on the development for, okay, what next steps we need to do to create the microfluidic pump by uh, this uh, nanoprinting process. So that's, let's say, to go short, an overview about our project. Um, if there will be any questions, we will be open to answer and uh, we would welcome to learn about your, you know, appreciation. Yes, thank you very much for your presentation. And um, now um, I would say we can open the floor for questions. So if you have any questions, you can type them into the chat or otherwise you will find the function reactions and there you have the, fun uh, the function raise hand. Um, as soon as you raise your hand, we will see your icon and then we can um, hand the mic to you. Oh, okay, Willem Enthoven, you're fast. <laughs> Thank you, Marcel, for your explanation. Um, in your last slide, you referred to next steps uh, with the, uh, making the device for labs and, and knowing a, a technology roadmap that is realistic. If I cut things short and I say, what is the first volume uh, application where you're hoping for? Who should now jump up and say, we, sh we must talk? Uh, yeah, good question, Willem. Uh, thank you. Well, in, in principle, um, the, the killer application for this technology would definitely be the, the, the touchscreen, so the, the transparent conductive film application. And this is also where we work together with uh, Kotema to, uh, to further explore, let's say, integration capability on their roll-to-roll -roll equipment. But it's clear that to uh, to step into this development, you know, it, it's not a Friday afternoon activity. So this this really would need, let's say, next level uh, system engineering and uh, and development to uh, to create a, a total solution, which would be uh, let's say to be implemented in industrial environment at the end of the day. And for doing so, there would be a need. Uh, obviously for a launching customer or at least a let's say an applicant in industry would say okay we really want to go this route okay and we really want to team up with Cotema and the micro uh, to uh, to put this effort together into 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 place yeah clear thank you 
Okay, and we already uh, we have a question to the uh, in the chat. So, did you investigate optical properties such, uh, such as polarization of the wires? Um, yeah, good question. No, not yet. Indeed, uh, this would be let's say next steps to go. So, um, based on research, uh, actually from Dow, where we uh, connected in the early days and also learned about this technology from them. Uh, they did studies on, on haze and transparency based on, on silver uh, metal mesh, which they, you know, researched on, on this technology. Um, and uh, they showed uh, pretty high uh, capabilities, uh, like, uh, you know, 1% um, haze, 95% uh, above 95% uh, transparency uh, of this, of this uh, fibers. Now, the fibers can be as thin as one micron or below. Um, and as far as I understood uh, in discussions, you know, to be invisible, you, you should create fibers below three microns. Uh, so it will, really, you know, it will be, it will be avoided by, by naked eye. Um, but this, these are the properties I'm, I, I'm aware of as being done in, in research uh, mode in those days. But we have not been able to find the proper inks yet to, uh, you know, to create this, uh, this middle, metal mesh in the, same, in the same way yet. OK. Did this answer your question? I think yes. Or have you further questions? Mm. Partially, okay, let's keep in touch. Sure, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. <laughs> okay, perfect. But, um, okay, so, um, yes, Dirk Kalinowski mm -hmm. raised his hand. Uh, only one question. You've mentioned um, always the silver as your material for uh, the nanowires, uh, and uh, that you started with that. Uh, do you expect that is also possible with uh, gold or other materials or uh, what do you need for uh, that? Is it a material that you produce by your own um, that you need for uh, your printer or is it something that you buy? Okay, Dirk, uh, thanks for your question. Well, actually, um, silver inks are, are, are quite available on the market in printed electronics. Um, I, I might, might have forgotten to introduce the micro in that respect. We are a company, let's say, a technology company in printed electronics. So we are pretty familiar with the uh, flexible habit electronics industry and also supply chain. Uh, silver inks are abundant available from several uh, uh, brands. Uh, silver is, uh, is, is a nice material since it's not so costly and uh, you can handle with that in atmospheric circumstances. So you don't need, let's say, high temperatures or nitrogen environment or inert environment to, to treat. So it's, it's a very friendly uh, material to work with. Um, Sure, there is other, other materials as well, uh, like uh, the, there are also copper inks available, but then you, you really need to take care about, um, about the oxidation problems with uh, nanoparticles of, uh, of copper. Um, the gold is going to be more expensive um, to give, in, and, and we even have platinum ink, uh, nanoparticles platinum ink. But that, that's extremely expensive, actually. So, so silver is a is a moderate, you know, uh, uh, abundant available uh, material which can be applied for this uh, applications. We don't we don't uh, formulate our inks ourselves. So this would be something to reach out for and see if we can find, let's say, partners to collaborate with and, and find appropriate materials to do this uh, to do this nanoprinting uh, process. Okay, so you're so far into Oh, Alexander Geldrop has also a question. <laughs> Yeah, thank you for the presentation, uh, Marcel. Um, you mentioned in the beginning that for transparent conductive film that the, the, the best alternative material would be metal mesh, yeah, which is the one that you're working with. Um, 
I was wondering, are, are there competitive methods of, of people trying to integrate it, uh, integrate it, or is there really at this point no one else that is, that that has an, a serious idea to integrate this material within the conductive film? Well, it, 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 yes, there are there are competitive uh, approaches. I've seen competitive approaches in industry. It would be quite bold to state that this would be the only way forward. <laughs> Uh, I don't think that's the case, you know, because, you know, the search for a transparent conductive film with high properties in terms of conductivity, transparency and low haze is, is, is already ongoing for a couple of years uh, and trying to replace IPO. Um, so, yes, there are. I have seen several uh, other technologies that could, uh, you know, approach uh, this, uh, this quest. Now, the benefit of electric spinning actually is that it's 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 atmospheric, so you don't need uh, let's say high costly um, vacuum tools. Um, it's direct right, it's fast. It's, let's say pulling the the, the 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 jet can go up to let's say a high high speed like like five meters per minute or so. Uh, or it, it can go pretty pretty fast. Um, so it, it is, let's say, a, 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 an inexpensive, straightforward uh, application or, or additive technology, which, which could yield, you know, uh, a direct right solution, uh, which is promising for this, uh, for this application. Thank you. Okay, so I think uh, the fact that you don't need a vacuum and that the printing speed is quite high, I think it's very interesting, for example, also for demonstrators and prototypes, also in industry, not just for um, research purpose. That's right? Yeah, that's, that's correct. That's ah, okay, great, great, great. But um, <laughs> how could people obtain a printer? Well, um, straightforward to uh, please contact us and uh, let's collaborate. Uh, mm -hmm. We could start off with uh, uh, do the application development and process research together, for instance, on our uh, setup, which we have right now. And next to that, uh, you know, having a launching customer for, let's say, the first series of print heads and uh, electronics and systems uh, would, be, would be very welcomed. And then we can just leverage um, the uh, the design and engineering and also sales and services for for this printer and printer modules to be integrated. Mm -hmm. So we do have the capability to uh, to not only let's say research the technology as we as we showed or design prototypes, but we also could follow through within a network in terms of uh, the making available print heads and then drive electronics to be integrated or even integrated together with, uh, let's say, a customer making uh, platforms available. Okay, and I think the network is a very interesting point because, for example, in your um, consortium, there's also Cortema and they have this um, Technicum. Yeah, so, for example, they have the machines and you can test uh, yeah. to find a suitable solution because I think the printers uh, should be configured uh, very individually for each um, application field. Okay, yeah. and um, what's the time frame? If I say this, this is a nice idea, <laughs> how, how long would it take to develop your technology further for a certain uh, application field? Well, I think that during the course of this year would be would be feasible. Uh, we're we're about to uh, set up the design and engineering of our first series of print heads. Uh, let's assume that that would be uh, projected to be um, ready by by mid mid of this year. So we could be in the second half of this year. We could uh, embark upon let's say market introduction and uh, collaboration. So this is what we are aiming for. Mm -hmm. So while uh, Rocket Reloaded was an Interreg 5A project, I think um, um, Interreg 6A is about to start. So <laughs> this could be, for example, a good contact point in the end. Okay. That, that would be great, uh, Hendrik. Uh, we, <laughs> we definitely would appreciate the support of uh, Rocket 6. Yeah. Okay. Are there further questions? 
Can you say something about the benefits of the electrospinning technology over conventional printing technologies um, with conductive inks, uh, for example, circuit boards? Yeah, sure. Good question. Um, you know, the, the current printing technologies uh, are typically related with, uh, uh, you know, the spitting or drop on demand system. So like print heads. OK, and um, for print heads and, and inkjet printing or even, let's say, other technologies for printing, it's very hard to go below, let's say, 30 micron resolution or feature sizes. That's almost not possible. So, so um, about uh, the inkjet printing process is uh, limited in terms of uh, accuracy and feature sizes. So to go into um, the area of semicom, let's say advanced packaging, where you need to have feature sizes, uh, you know, somewhere between one micron or ten micron, okay, to to implement like uh, redefinition layers in advanced packaging or interconnection of chips going to the contact pads. Uh, you, you cannot do that with, uh, let's say, conventional inkjet printing or screen printing, screen printing. You cannot do that either because, you know, it's, it's not direct right. It's not digital screen printing. So here are the limitations of conventional printing uh, technologies. And with this direct right nanoprinting, we, we try to break through this uh, barrier and uh, move into the range of one to 10 micron or even below one micron, depending on applications. So instead of pushing a droplet out of the nozzle, pulling to the droplet and creating a nozzle and creating a jet, which is sub, sub micron or micron uh, dimension. Yes. and. Uh... As you already mentioned, the faster you go, the thinner, uh, the thinner your print lines right. will be. So right, right. It, it's it's getting even uh, even smaller and thinner. Um, okay, great. Um, further questions? Okay, the last question was answered. Okay, this is great. Um, but do you have any further questions? Okay, I think um, this is not the case. So um, I think I will um, send a follow up email and I can put your contact um, into this email so that uh, if there are any further questions in the future, that they can contact you. Yep. And we will also uh, publish the video um, later on. Um, this will, I will also put uh, the link into this email so that all of you, dear participants, will have the information uh, of this webinar. And possibly there are ideas about um, application fields. I think this is the main, uh, most interesting point uh, for, for this project and for the consortium to find some application fields. And let's test this technology, what it really does. Um, and uh, yeah, so again, thank you very much for, for this uh, very nice presentation about uh, the innovation you uh, achieved in this project. And thank you, dear participants, for your interest. And um, as um, Alex already mentioned, maybe we, we will meet again um, next week. Uh, then it's about um, skin cancer detection um, by photonics. Um, so thank you very much. Have a nice evening and hope we will meet soon. Thank you, Henry. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Thank Thanks you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Good evening. Good evening.